Hi, today I'm going to start to talk about the simplif simplification of force and couple. Uh, last time we started to talk about the couple and says that the couple is two forces that they have the same magnitude in the opposite direction and they are separated by distance d. So if you have two forces like that, they're separated by distance d uh, and they're in the opposite direction, we call them uh, a couple. And know that the uh, moment from this couple is one of them, uh, one of the force, the magnitude of one of the force times the distance between them. This is the moment uh, caused by these uh, two forces. And also we mentioned that these two forces, because they are uh, in opposite direction, they always cancel each other. So the sigma f is always zero. So there is no <coughs> force, the resultant forces, but uh, they create the moment and uh, uh, that moment caused by uh, forces and the distance. And as a very quick example, I said that for example, when you have a steering wheel in a car, and you want to um, rotate that, by your hand you um, apply two opposite forces on the steering wheel and it starts to rotate. So uh, that's the moment that caused that the steering wheel to uh, rotate. Now we want to look at, uh, I want, we want to look at these uh, properties and use it to simplify systems of forces that we have. Uh, so I'm going to start to uh, talk about a simple case. So assume that we have an object like that and then there is a force, um, let's say, there is a force if apply here at point uh, a. So I have point A that there is a force applied. Now if I come and I choose any other point, any point, assume I choose point B, any point, I choose point B, and then apply two opposite forces equal to F at that point. So I'm going to apply two opposite forces. One of them is just F like that, and the other one is just the opposite of that F. So if I apply two opposite forces on that, still it's the same uh, system because these two forces cancel each other out. So it doesn't matter if I have them or not. So initially I only have these red forces and then I add these two opposite forces. Now if I look at that, I can say that this is equivalent to this one. So if it's a point A and it's a point B, I can say, instead of canceling these two forces together, I'm going to cancel the left green one with the red one. So I cancel the red one with the left green one. So these two, I cancel these two together. And whatever is going to be left is this F. And these two are equivalent. These, these two systems are the same. So we're going to look at that. These two uh, are equivalent. So if I look at these two cases, what I can understand that is that if I have an object, I can move that, if I have an object and the force apply on that, I can move that force along its line of action. So I can move that force along the line of action and bring it from point A to point B. As long as I'm moving it, sliding it back and forth on, line, on, on its line of action, these two cases are going to be the same. So I can have it like that with F applying on the A or I can have it like that, the F applying on the B. So these two are the same. As long as I just move it along a line of action of the force. So I can move the force back and forth along its line of action and uh, the result would be the same. So that's the very first case that we can look at that. And the second case, now let's look at uh, that same condition, but this time <coughs> assume there is a force that is that in point A, just consider that point A and point B again. So it's a point A and point B. So it's a A and it's a B. This time, assume the force is applying vertically on point A. 
So I apply force A on that, uh, F on that. If I look at that, that system by how it is, the force A wants to move this object down and because it's just fixed at this end, it's gonna try to bend it or somehow rotate it at the, because of the moment this force created about this support. So now if, if I come and add again two opposite forces like the previous cases, but this time vertically. So I add this one and this one, two opposite forces. Still is nothing gonna change because I have two opposite forces applied at the same point. So still is the same case. So nothing changed. Now let's draw that again and say, what if I come and I draw that and so there's a point A, the point B. This time I come and said, I keep this downward F. I will keep this downward F. So I will keep that in place. Now I keep that one in place. Now I have these two. Look at these two, these two forces. If you look at these two forces, these two, these two forces cancel each other out. So they cancel each other out in a case of the magnitude along the y-axis. But if you look at them, these two make a couple. So they are the equal forces in the opposite direction. So they make a couple. They don't have any effect in the y direction as a force, but so because the resultant force is zero, but they create a uh, moment. So I replace these two with the moment they create. So if I consider this distance, the distance between A and B as a D, okay, I'm gonna replace these two F with the moment at point B, which is gonna be F, D. So if you look at here, what, what's happening here is that I have a force initially applied at point A, and then I move it to point B. So I, I have a force at point A and move it to point B. When I move it to point B, I have to compensate for the moment the force created when it was initially at point A. Because I know when this force here at point A it was created a moment about, at, anyway, about that um, support. So when I move it there, the moment this force is created is going to be a smaller compared, when, uh, compared to the time when says if I assume I calculate the moment about this point. So when it was here, it created a larger moment. And when I move it toward the end with respect to that point, it's going to uh, create a smaller and smaller and smaller moment. So I'm losing the moment to compensate for the moment I'm losing when I move the force from here to here, I have to add uh, that force to compensate, uh, I have to add the moment to compensate for that. So uh, the other word, uh, when we move the force from one point to another point, we have to add or sometimes subtract moment in a way that it mimic the original condition, its original location. So if, we, if by moving the um, uh, force on the object, uh, we reduce the total moment, we have to add the moment to compensate for that. If by moving the force on the object, we uh, uh, somehow produce uh, more moment, we, we cause them, has a larger moment, so we have to uh, subtract that moment from that. Uh, for example, again, assume, for on, assume respect to this end. If the force was, only, if the force was initially at point B and I move it at, toward point A, Respect to that end, if I move it here, so I'm gonna in, that force is gonna increase the moment is applied respect to that point. So somehow I have to cancel out the moment, uh, the moment I caused uh, by moving uh, from the B to the A. So remember, we can move the for, uh, force from point A to point B or point B to point A as long as 
we add or subtract moment in a way that we keep the initials uh, we keep the initial moment in the system the same uh, so if we move it along the line of action we don't need to do anything so we can move the force along the line of action and that's okay we can move the force in any other direction as long as we add or subtract moment to the system so it stay the same as it was the moment in the system stay the same as it was initially in the initial condition we can do that for the um, uh, um, uh, 3d cases as well so this is the 2d one so i'm going to show how it works in 3d if i if you have a 3d So if I have a 3D object like that, and there's a point over here, and assume I have two forces, so assume one force apply here, one force apply here, let's say F2, and there, for example, let's say there are three forces, F3 apply here, and then I have a moment apply here, also I have a moment apply here. I can bring all the, of these to point O. So I can move them and bring them all of them to point O. How? So okay, I'm going to draw that shape again. So I assume that's my shape again and that's point O. So I move the F1 to point O. So I bring the F1 to point O. So it's going to be F1. Now I have to compensate for the moment that I lose because when I bring the F1 to point O, I lose the moment because it's moving toward that point O. And the moment I'm losing was that, I assume it's gonna be like that. So it's gonna be R1. The moment for the M1 is um, R1 cross F1. So I have to bring also that moment with me. So it's gonna be also, I have to bring the M1 as well with, um, to that point to compensate for the moment I'm losing when I go from uh, uh, point. The same for the F2, I can bring F2 from here to here, I bring the F2 and say, okay, okay that's my F2. But again, um, if you look at that, uh, I'm gonna lose moment because I'm moving. So that's the, if it is the R2, then the M2 is, R2, F2. So as I'm losing that moment, I have to bring that moment uh, to point A. So I have to go and say, okay, you look, I have to bring that moment also. So that's gonna be M2. And I can bring the same thing, I can bring the F3. So F3 is like that. So I bring the uh, F3 to that point as well. The same as those, uh, the other two. I have to bring the moment caused uh, by F3, the moment I'm losing by moving the F3. And this is, assume this is the R3 and the M3 is R3, F3, cross F3. And then when I'm moving it, I have to bring it um, to that point and says, so, so, okay, I have to bring also M3 with me to that point. And after I bring all the forces, for the moment, I can move the moment anywhere. It's, it's a, if it's a free moment, I can move it anywhere. So also I'm gonna bring that M to here to that point uh, O. So also I have that M to that point O. And eventually when I have them uh, sitting like that, uh, now, now that they are uh, sitting at the very same point, I can go uh, and find the resultant force and resultant moment. So eventually I can go if I have the same object and this is the point O. Now I'm actually gonna say add all the forces together and get one result and forces. For example, like that. Assume this is the result and forces. And then add all the moment together and get one moment uh, as a result and uh, moment. So in the 3D again, if I have different forces and different moment applying again, I can move them all to the single point as long as I compensate for the moment I'm losing 
uh, uh, or I'm gaining, it depends on what, which direction I'm moving. So we move the forces, we put the, the effect of the moment we are losing or gaining uh, to that point. We bring all the free moment also to that point. And then when everything is uh, sitting in that point, we can add all the forces together, get to get the result and forth, and get all the moment together to get the uh, moment, uh, result and moment. So eventually, the system of the force and moment can be reduced to a single force and single uh, moment like this that uh, we have here. Uh, <coughs> there are uh, other methods that we can use to simplify that, uh, the two, three more uh, condition I'm going to put there. So, uh, one other case that we can consider is that if we have a couple of forces apply on an object and all of the forces are going to be intersect. So, assume I have an object like that and I have a couple of forces apply on that. So, I assume I have F1 again. I have F2 and I have F3. So if all these forces intersect at the same point O, I can just simply move them all to that point. So, uh, uh, simply in, in other words, so if I can have it like that, said so because they're all intersecting that point, I can simply go there and say if there's a point O, I move the, that's the F1, and that's the F2, and then that's the F3. I can move them, all of them, to that point. And if you remember, uh, I was saying, we can move the force along its line of action. And as long as we move it along its line of action, we don't need to be worried about the moment. So if all of them intersect at that point, we can move all of them to that single point, and eventually, for that one, we can add them together and get one result and force in uh, that location. Um, now, if we have them, uh, if we have forces, but they are not intersecting in the single point, so I assume that, uh, uh, again, we have the object, that we have forces that, so this is the F1, this is, for example, F2, and let's say, this is F3. So we have three forces that are not intersect and we want to mo move them all to mm, point O. So if we, let's move it a little bit. So we want to have them all to point, to any given point, for example, point O. Um, So like what we had before, just uh, remove all the forces there along with the moment they are creating. So if I have a point O here, so I can move all the three, uh, all the forces into that point. So I can have say, okay, this is the F1, and this is the F2, and this is the F3. And then eventually I have to add the three moments that they are creating. So I'm going to say, okay, this is the, for example, M3, and this is the for example, M1 uh, and this one is the M2. So I can add them all together. And when I, when I get to that point, eventually I can add all the forces and all the moments together and get something like that. So I'm going here, assume that eventually I get one, that's the point O. So I assume that I get one um, F, that's the FR, and then I get the uh, uh, resultant M as MR, like that. Now, I can come here and say that, you know what, I can move that force. So, that's the point O, that's the point O, that's the point O. So I can move that force to new point FR in a way that I don't need to have uh, that uh, MR anymore. So if I have a distance here D, 
from its original position. So I'll move the fr in, case, in a way that fr itself create that uh, moment for me. So if I look at that, I can move it. And what I, have, I need is that uh, I want the mr to become fd. Uh, FRD. So if I move the distance as a MR divided by FR. So if I move the force, you see here, for example, in that case, I have a force and I have a moment that want to rotate it this way. So I move the force this direction. Yeah, I move the force this direction. So the force itself generate that moment for me. And because the force itself generates a moment for me, I don't need to have the uh, moment. So I move the force in a location that I don't need any uh, moment anymore. And I can replace this with that. So if you look at that, I have three forces here, I brought them all into single point. And then I find the resultant moment and resultant force. And then I start to move the force in a way that I get rid of the moment. And that force itself produces the moment uh, I want. The same if we have the forces and the moment we could have done the same thing so we bring all the forces to the single point bring all the moment to the single point again we find the resultant for a resultant moment and then we start to move the force in a way that the force itself generate that moment uh, about that point oh and we don't need to have that moment anymore so we reduce the whole system of forces and moment to single uh, uh, forces this is, uh, this is another uh, uh, application that we can uh, use and work with that. The other thing is that if we have a 3D plate, so I assume that we have a 3D plate like that, and then we'll have some parallel forces apply on that plate. So all parallel forces applying on that plate. Eventually, I can move them all the forces and all to to single uh, point again. So I can go ahead and say there is a. <coughs> so I can go ahead and say you know for example I move all of them to point O. So I go to point O, and I can move all of them to point O. So eventually, I'm gonna have a, a resultant forces. Mm. So I have resultant forces like that, which is going to be parallel to all the forces I have previously. So, so if it was F1, F2, and F3, so I move all of them to that point. Also, if you look at that, they all create a moment about that point or about that um, uh, axis that we can have. So also we have the moment uh, in that location. So let's say. Um, we have an axis like that goes there like that. So it's the AA. So it's the AA. And assume then after I move all the forces to that point, I also move the resultant um, uh, moment about that axis like this. So I assume this is going to be the resultant axis as well. Now, I can, the same way that I did it there, I can start to move it, move that force in a position that when I apply that force in that position, I don't need to have that moment anymore. So again, I can have a parallel forces and then I can bring them all to the single point and then I'll, I'll bring the resultant moment onto that point. So all the forces and all the moment goes to that point, then we find the resultant force and resultant moment. And eventually I can move that force in a way that I don't need to have that moment anymore. So the force itself can uh, generate the moment. Uh, in this case, so I have to probably to make it look right, I have to put it the other way, so yes. No, it's correct. So if, for example, the resultant force is F or the resultant moment is M or about the axis, then I move the forces in a way so that these forces itself create that resultant moment for me. And so I can reduce these, uh, for example, three forces to a single forces that 
these single forces create both the magnitude of the forces and the moment equal to uh, uh, whatever was the condition these three forces was uh, created initially. Uh, the other uh, uh, form is that other use that we can use for simplification is that assuming that we have <coughs> again in 3D we have a plate and mm, in that case assume uh, let's say we have um, two axes have two axes for example a a and b b and then we have uh, forces like that and uh, similar to what we had before we have the uh, and assume we have two moments in this case one of them uh, assume we have the moment like that m over a and then we have M over Z. So we have one forces and two moments, one of them over AA, one of them around uh, ZZ. So in this case, again, I can move these forces, I can move these forces uh, in a position that it generate that moment for me. So it can compensate for that moment for me. So I can move it to the position that only I need to have that force and uh, that moment the mz so if i move it to if bring i move the f from the point as from this point to this point then i will get rid of ma in that case i only have the forces and the moment rotate uh, along the, about that for about the forces and i can remove that ma in uh, this situation uh, so in uh, simple word when we're in either 2d or 3d we can move the forces a moment around as long as well, uh, we know if we are uh, by moving the forces we are making more moment or we are making less moment if you are making less moment we have to add the moment to compensate for the moment we lose if you are making more moment we have to subtract the moment uh, to compensate for the moment we created uh, and we use uh, that in, to simplify the system of uh, forces that we have to a single force and a single moment or sometimes we reduce it to a single force uh, most of the problem we will have in this case is like that we have a system of force and they will ask us move all the forces to single point so if you are asked to move all the forces to a single point it just uh, find all the forces calculate all the forces and bring it to that single point and then uh, find all the moment when the forces generate at their initial location at their general initial position and then also bring all the moment to that single point that's the f uh, first type of uh, question you will have the second type of question you might have is that uh, simplify the system to a single point in other words find a point that if you move all the point to that single point you only have one force and no moment and so you don't need to have any moment. Uh, the procedure is again the same. In that case, add all the force together and just assume a point and put the forces on that point. Then try to find, to refine the position of that point to produce the uh, moment all the forces was creating, uh, all the forces were creating when they were in the initial position. Uh, and uh, we can solve that. So we can, uh, we will look at an example uh, to for both of these cases uh, how, how, we have, how we can solve the uh, here of these uh, two cases if we need to solve them okay let's look at an example uh, how we can simplify the system of forces in this example they're asking we have an object that has a 200 newton apply, force applied here 50 newton force act here and the three meter and the one meter, one meter, four five degrees, and they ask bring all the forces to point O. So I want to bring F one and F two to point O uh, in that case. Uh, 
Uh, when we have this type of problems, as I said, the very first step you need, uh, the steps you need to do is add all the forces together and we bring them to point O. And then we find the uh, moment at their original position and also bring that moment to point O. So, uh, assume I'm, I'm just going to draw that object here, but this time only the obvious so I'm going to have this. Uh, and then we can add forces after we start moving them. Uh, uh, as I said before, when we are dealing with the 2D problem, prob uh, the easiest, it's not always, but, on, but in most cases, it's easier to uh, start working on the problem by finding the, all the forces along the X and Y uh, uh, axis. So here, F2 is already along the Y axis, so we don't need to mm, you know, be worried about that, but we are going to find this one about uh, X and Y. So I'm going to say that this one is... Um, and I need to find this one as well. So if this is the 45, this is going to be 45. So it's going to be uh, that force that mm, I have here is going to be uh, 200 sine 45. And this one here is going to be 200 uh, cosine 45. So I have two forces, one of them sine 45, so the cosine 45 in um, uh, X and Y, let's make, so it's the X and Y direction. So when you're dealing with the 2D, the very first thing you do, find X, X, each forces along the X and Y direction. This, now, in this case again, what we are gonna do at the very first, if they ask you to move all the forces to the single point, first add all the forces together and find them. So, so I'm gonna add all the forces along the X, so all the forces I have along this is these 200 sine 45 and is this uh, 50 in the opposite direction. So if I add these two together, um, I'm gonna get 91.42 newton. So I add all the forces along the x-axis. The same thing I'm gonna do for all the forces along the y-axis. So along the y-axis, the only force I have along the y-axis is this uh, 200 cosine 45, which is um, uh, moving downward, so it's gonna be negative uh, 200 uh, cosine 45, which is gonna be minus 141.42 newton. So these are fx and fy uh, that I have. So I can come here and say, okay, um, my fx is here. So it's going to be my fx and it's a positive. So it's the fx, uh, sigma fx. And then my fy is a negative, so it's going downward. So it's going to be my sigma fy. So this one is... Uh, 91.42 and this one is negative um, uh, 141.42 uh, uh, that it uh, goes so this is it shows my sigma f y is goes sigma f x um, that it goes the m so by looking at that i know that i want to bring all the forces to that here so my resultant force is this so i know that okay this is going to be my resultant force and this is its magnitude and it is its direction. We need to find both its magnitude and its direction. So its magnitude is that the FR, we know that the magnitude of FR is just, um, we are going to do the sigma FX squared plus sigma FY squared, square root of that, which if we calculate that number, uh, going to be uh, 91.42 squared plus negative 1.4142 squared, which gives us uh, 168.4 newton. So this is the magnitude of that FR. Also, we need to find the direction of that FR. So uh, to find the direction, if you remember, 
we said that the direction is uh, tangent inverse of the sigma fy over sigma fx which is going to be tangent inverse of um, negative 141.42 divided by 91.42 and it gives us um, negative 57.12 degrees so the theta and you already can see it's the negative because it's the going from the x-axis downward so it's going to be negative uh, uh, 57.12 so and if you know that just in case that if we look at that so if this is 0 this is 90 and this is 90 so it's if it says then negative 57 so we know that we have to come down and this is our theta and as you can see already we'll see that it moves down and so we know now we have we brought all the forces to point O we find the magnitude of the resultant force we find the direction of the resultant force uh, so that's the first step the second step is that we have to see and find the <clears throat> effect of the moment so what we are going to do is that we will go and calculate the moment of force at their original location at their initial location add them all together and then we bring um, them all back on point O. So, so far we brought the forces to point O. The second part is that we have to bring the moment, all the moment to point O. So, we'll look at, uh, in other words, because we brought the forces to point O, we have to compensate for the moment that we are losing because when we have force here and force here, they create a moment about point O, but when we bring in them all to point O, then we lose all the moment because that force goes through point O. There is no moment here, there anymore, but we know initially there was a moment as a result of this force. So we calculate that for moment and we bring them back to point O. So we are going to calculate all the uh, moment about point O and then uh, um, so we're going to add all the moment uh, about point O mm, when the force located at, the, at their initial position. I assume again the counterclockwise is being positive and let's start from the uh, here. Uh, or let's just start, yeah, let's start from here. So it's going to be, uh, if I consider from the uh, F2 respect to O, so F2 respect to O again I said that assume there is a rope going from F2 to point O and see which direction is going to rotate that rope. So it's going to rotate it counterclockwise. So it's going to be positive and it's going to be FD. So F is 50 and the D is the normal distance from point O to that force. So normal distance from point O to that force is that uh, 3 meter here. Um, that I can use it. Then I will go and look at, uh, I will come here and look at the vertical F1. So uh, if I look at here, uh, respect to uh, that point O, if I um, connect the uh, point to that, so this is, the, this is the location that point actually applied. So if I uh, draw a rope from here to that location, and look at how that uh, F1 is going to rotate that, that this one how it's going to rotate that is going to rotate it this direction. It's going to rotate it uh, like that. So uh, mm, if I want to make them more clear, this one is actually applying here and this one is actually applying here. So because this is the point that the point, the force is applying. So this one actually rotating the force clockwise. So it's going to be negative going to be negative and the value of that word is 200 cosine 45 and the, uh, the normal distance is that I remember uh, I said everyone you want to find a normal distance just extend the line of action and then draw the normal distance from the point to that line of action and this is going to be one meter the normal distance is going to be one meter the same, uh, so again, I said that this one is this one, 
and this one is this. So because this is the point that forces apply, I put them in the correct location so we don't get confused uh, about them. Uh, this one is 200 sine theta, and if I look at it respect to point O, it wants to rotate here, respect to point O. So it's going to be again negative because uh, it's a negative, and I get 200 sine 45. And then we need to find the distance, the distance, the normal distance to point O. Again, whenever you want to find normal distance, extend the line of action and then find the normal distance to that point. And this is the normal distance that point, which is gonna be four in that case. So if I add all of them together, I'm gonna, <coughs> uh, I'm gonna uh, get negative 557.11. So this is uh, the, um, moment I'm gonna get Newton meter and um, so it's negative it's, it means that it is clockwise it means that this rotate clockwise so I can go there and now I have to bring that moment also to point O so it's gonna be uh, 557.11 also the moment so this is how we uh, do the calculations. So, um, first of all, we add all the, f find all the forces in the x and y direction, add them all together, and then put them in the point you want. After you have f all the x and all, all the force along the x and along the y in that point, then find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. So it gives the magnitude and the direction resultant. After that, you have to go and compensate for the moment you lose because you move the forces. So go back and look at the forces at their original location. Calculate the moment they produce when they are sitting at their original location. And when, uh, when you calculate the moment, add them all together. And then that moment also you have to bring it here. So to compensate for the moment initially those forces uh, created. By doing that, we move all the forces to the given uh, point. So again, this is the uh, this is the type of uh, problem that they, uh, they uh, you are asked that move all the uh, forces to a known uh, position. So we know where we want to move it, and this is how we do the calculation uh, for that. Okay, now let's look at the, another example. In this example, we have an object that the force F1 and F2 apply on that object. And we are asked to find the location that we can uh, uh, simplify these two forces to the single forces without having any moment. So we want to have only one single force uh, and no moment in, uh, in the system. So we want to find the location that if I apply a single force in that location, that force both uh, reproduce the effect of these two forces and the effect of the moment these two forces uh, created. Uh, in, this, uh, in this type of problem, we don't know where the forces are going to be, so we have to find the location. Um, I'm going to just draw that again here so we can have it uh, for our calculation later on. So I assume this is our object and it's the point O and it's the A and it's the B. Remember when I said that we are starting to work with this type of problem uh, uh, in the 2D problem again the first step the first good step is that find all the forces along the x and y direction so here again if i look at that this one's uh, f one's along the x direction so i don't need to do anything but in the, uh, here i have to do that um, along the x direction so it's going to be 100 uh, cos 100 cosine 30 and the vertical force is going to be um, 100 uh, sine 30 
so I have all of them in uh, X and Y direction. Next thing is that again, when we want to simplify forces, go and add all the forces along the X and add all the forces along the Y direction. So sigma F X, if I add all the forces along the X direction, so I have uh, 100 cosine 30 in the positive direction and 50 in the negative direction. So if I add them together, I'm going to get 36.6 .6 Newton, uh, my sigma F axis. And then add all the force about the Y direction. And the only one I have is the 100 sine 30 and it's all forces are positive. So it's going to be 100 sine 30. And the value it's going to give me is a 50 Newton. So if I go back and set, so I know my forces, uh, my resultant forces, the sigma f for my resultant force and sigma y for my resultant are these two values. But I don't know where they are applying. Uh, the, the problem asks us to find the point, as uh, I probably forgot to mention, the problem asks us to find the location on AB, on AB, that if we put the resultant force on that single point, we don't need to have any moment. It's in other words, we want to find the point on AB that we can replace these two forces with a single force. And these and that single force both mimic the effect of F1 and F2 and mimic the uh, moment F1 and F2 uh, creating. So I know it's uh, sitting somewhere on the F1 and F2, but I don't know where it is. I just gonna assume uh, some point. So I assume, for example, here, uh, some point here, and I know that uh, sigma f y is like that. So I have fifty here, uh, and I know I have thirty six point six here. So that's the uh, sigma f y, and that's the sigma f x. So I know that's my sigma of y, that's the sigma of x, and I, my resultant forces as a result is going to be something like that. So this is my resultant force, f r, and this is the theta. I don't know where it is, but I know uh, this is how it is how it's going to be. So I'm first I'm going to find its um, the magnitude. So the f r, the magnitude of f r is uh, sigma f x squared plus sigma plus sigma f y uh, square on the e 36.6 squared plus 50 a squared a square root of that which will be uh, 61.94 61.94 newton so that is the, uh, the, the magnitude of the uh, FR. And we know that the, uh, for the angle, we know that the angle is theta is tangent inverse of uh, sigma FY over sigma FX, which is tangent inverse of, and sigma FY is 50, over 36.6, which gives us 53.79 degrees in a positive. So we know that and we can see that it's a positive already there. So this is the magnitude and this is the uh, 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 angle of that force. So we know the R force, so we know the resultant force. We know that's a single force we have. Now we have to find where we want to put it in order to uh, only need that single force, we don't, then we don't need to add or subtract any moment from the system anymore. To do that, we assume that location, so we don't know where it is, but assume that location is sitting at point X. Um, so I assume this distance here, this distance is just X. It's, li it's sitting somewhere there, I don't know that. And the problem already told us find it on AB. So we know it's on AB, but we don't know where it is on the AB. So we assume the distance from that 
uh, x is from the O is well, I just make it is just x. So that's the x the distance we have. Now what we are gonna do is that uh, find all the moment that the forces generate when they are at their initial location so that's what you said so i'm gonna say i want to find all the moment about point o when they are sitting at their original location and i assume the counterclockwise is positive so again i start from here so it says it's a 15 newton and it's rotating counterclockwise because we want to rotate it that way again if forget assume there's a rope connected from the point to uh, to the force and see which direction that force the drive that rope and that's your dress so it's a counterclockwise so it's positive and the magnitude of force is 50 and then the normal distance from the force to that point the normal distance from the force to that point if i want to have it so it's the normal distance uh, from here to here so it's a normal distance from the force to uh, to the force is three so it's going to be three then i will look into this force the vertical force here the hundred one so if i again assume i connect the rope from here to end of that uh, to that force and see which direction is going to rotate it that cord so it's going to rotate it that way so it's going to be counterclockwise again it's going to be positive so it's going to be 100 sine 30 and then then the normal distance uh, uh, we need the normal distance and for the normal distance when we can't find it directly extend the line of action and then get the normal distance to that line of action so this is the uh, distance so it's going to be two And then for 100 cosine 30, if I ask, connect the rope from O to this force, it's going to rotate it this way. So it's going to be negative because it's a uh, clockwise end. So it's going to be 100 cosine 30. And the distance, the normal distance again, just extend the line of uh, action. And then again, this is the normal distance to that from the point O to the line of action of that force. So it's going to be three as well. So it's going to be three. And if we have, uh, if we do the calculation, we are going to get uh, <coughs> negative 9.8 Newton meter. So that's the uh, moment they're creating. So this is the moment they're creating initially. Now I want to find the moment these forces create about point O. So these two forces. So the, uh, I'm going to find the moment of FR about point O. So I want to see what is that uh, force. And it says the positive this direction. So I want to find the moment that FR created about point O, so I, I will uh, add this one and that one. So if I look at the FX, so it's going to be what's going to create is it's rotating counterclock, so it's going to be negative 36.6, .6, and the normal distance is um, we extend the line of action. And this is a normal distance, which is three meter. So the the moment Fx is created is negative three times three. And then if I look at the 50, the 50 is gonna rotate clockwise. So it's, uh, uh, it's gonna rotate counterclockwise, so it's positive. And the magnitude is 50. And the distance, so, to get the distance again, I'm going to extend the line of action and then find the distance, which is going to be this distance, which is x, as we have it up there. So it's going to be times x.
So these are the moment initially those two forces create. These are the moment the resultant force when we move it to new position is going to create. So now what we need to do is that we have to say initial forces point or should be equal to uh, forces that the new one uh, the new forces create so this is a f r so these two should be equal so in other words negative 36 26 times 3 plus 50x should be equal to negative 9.8 newton meter and if you do um, solve that x will, will come up up uh, 1.419 meter so it's going to be the location of the x and so we know that there is the location so in this type of problem uh, we are asked to simplify all the forces uh, to the single point and to only have one forces so this is how, how we are going to do that first we find all the forces and we put it at the at the assumed position so we assume a position and we put it there then we calculate all the moment that initially uh, those forces created we calculate the moment that the resultant forces created and then we uh, make them equal and we find the location of that in this case even if we have the moment here assume for example we had uh, some moment also we have applying somewhere on this one for example assume we had the moments like this here as well when we are calculating the initial moment also we add that m to that so easily we just come here and said the moment this force creates there was the moment these two forces create plus the, that moment if we had one we can also add it here the or to the uh, part that we are calculating the uh, initial moment on the system uh, and then we equal it uh, with the moment that with the moment that the force itself created and by equal them we get, get the position of uh, that uh, force or for our calculation